Hey, thanks for tuning back in again. Welcome aboard. This is KJ4YZI. My name is Eric, and the channel is Ham Radio Concepts. For my current subscribers and followers, welcome aboard. Nice to have you back. For the new people that might have just found my channel, I hope you subscribe to the channel and follow along. If you're interested in amateur radio, you never know what you're going to see on this channel, but hopefully you learn a lot. In this video, it's probably a little overdue on my channel. I probably should have made this video a couple years ago. We're going to talk about buying your first HF radio. And I'm going to use a little bit of personal experience from my venture in ham radio now at 13 years to help you understand a few things, but to show you and clear up a couple of things that you may be seeing as a message that I don't want you to take wrong. Because this is a very important aspect for you, buying a radio, saving money, using your money wisely. What do you buy? Does your wife and kids go broke for a month because you want the radio that everybody tells you you need? I want to clear this up for you and make it as easy as possible to help you enjoy the hobby, not get bored with it, and not go broke buying your radio. So let's talk about your first HF radio. Ham Radio Concepts. The place to come for amateur radio videos. Okay, so where do I start in this topic? I can go like five different directions in this. I'll try to make sure I don't ramble too much, so forgive me. But I, I like doing this. I like talking. I like teaching you guys. I like helping you out. So when I was first, I've been licensed 13 years. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. So I was licensed 13, uh, 13 years as of now. And the first couple years I spent on VHF, UHF, on the repeaters, working simplex, two meter repeaters, UHF repeaters, and that's a great place to start for the new operator. Great place to start. But remember, as a technician class, when you're first licensed, you have operating privileges on 10 meters and six meters as well. So there's quite a bit of stuff to do on technician class. So what I did was I played on that for years and I learned. I took it slow and I learned things here or there by trial and error, by, uh, you know, trying things, experimenting, and asking questions. And that's where this YouTube channel started. When I got to the point when I was trying different things and making things and experimenting and posting on forums, I always got from people, stop playing games and trying to make stuff. Just spend the money, go out there and buy this. And I would look at the answers they had and say, but what if I don't want to spend hundreds of dollars on all these things you're telling me to buy? Because I don't have it. And I learned more by experimenting and trial and error. So after I exhausted all those possibilities and worked hundreds and thousands of contacts on 6 meters and 10 meters as a technician, I decided to upgrade to general. And my Elmer, KI4LUY Patrick, got me started in this whole mess that caused me making videos three times a week for you guys. And he got me, with through him, I got my very first HF radio when I upgraded to general. Now, this HF radio that you see in this picture, it was an Yesu FT450. This is sitting in my closet right now, three feet from me. I've retired that radio because I used that radio for the better part of seven or eight years before I decided to upgrade. That's an entry-level rig. It, it will do HF, it will do 100 watts, it will do 6 meters, and it has some bells and whistles, but it's not a real high-end professional 7300 or 7610. It's an entry-level rig. It can be used portable. It can be used mobile. It can be used at a base. Now, I use that radio daily, and I got so excited with that radio and made thousands of contacts and learned so much about HF. And after about seven or eight years, I decided to upgrade because I wanted to, you know, and in between those seven or eight years, there was times I didn't touch it for six months. I moved back on to digital or moved back on to VHF and back and forth. And that always kept it interesting for me. So once I got to the point where I said, you know what? I love this radio and I've exhausted it. It's time to upgrade to something more, you know, more professional, more bells and whistles, something brand new to reinvent me into the hobby. And that's when I got the 7300 that I have here. Now, 
That 7300 is so amazing. This radio, I just got off the radio about an hour ago before I started recording this video. I worked the contest this weekend with it. It was great. And I love it. And I have yet to learn all the stuff about it. I have not made thousands of videos about it showing you everything because I don't even know things about it yet. I'm still learning it. And that's what, that's what I do. I, I learn piece by piece a little bit at a time. When I feel that I get bored, I open up a new chapter in a book and learn one thing I didn't know so that I can excite myself again. And so my Elmer Patrick, KI4LUI, once told me, and this was the greatest uh, line in my career of radio, was the Christmas presents are better wrapped when they're under the tree. That hits home every time because I remember for years I would sit on the bed and look at that catalog, and DX Engineering or Gigaparts or wherever I would look and see these radios for $1,500 and $2,000 and $2,500 and I would call them up and say, Pat, man, what do, you, what do you think? We should go in halves on this radio or what do you think it'd be like to have that? I bet you you could work all these contacts. I bet you'd hear everybody. And I would work myself up into a frenzy about trying to sell things to buy that radio and thinking about how good that radio is. But the reality is it won't make me any more better of an operator. You know, you, you can take it slow. Uh, you know, there's people that I've seen, that I've known personally, that bought their house and built their house and their property around their radio hobby. And in the end, after two or three years of, wow, I built this house so that I had coax ran in the walls and I had a 4,000 square foot room for my ham shack with in the ceiling LED lights and floors that have monitors in them. And they don't even get on the hobby anymore. They've retired. They wore themselves out. It wasn't fun for them anymore when you have everything. So that's why I take it slow one at a time. Now, there are some people that decide to get licensed. They take all three licenses, the general or the tech, the general, and the extra right off the bat. They walk out of the room as an extra. They buy a $5,000 rig, make an antenna farm, and they call themselves the best of the best. But if you don't know how to operate it and you're not a seasoned professional or you haven't been doing it for years, you know, it doesn't make you any better than the guy that just been doing it for 50 years. It doesn't make me any better that I have a 7300 and you have a $500 rig. I'm no better than you. I just decided to get a more powerful radio and reinvent my hobby for myself all over again. So there's a time when you can worry about how much you need to spend. I don't want people to get the ambition or the, uh, the uh, message that I'm trying to tell you if you just found my channel that you have to spend all this money and have the radio I have to be an HF operator. You absolutely do not. So I want to show you in this video what kind of options you have. Uh, I'll show you in this video what you might want to stay away from, from for now as a new hobbyist because I get a lot of questions about should I get a QRP radio for my first rig. So I'll explain that. And then I get some other questions on why don't you show all these radios in your back of your, you know, behind you in a camera like all these other YouTube guys do? Your radio room must be this great big playground with thousands of things. I really want to come over and check out your radio room. You'd be pretty sad when you came in the room and saw I have one HF rig on my desk and my room is about 10 by 12. It's not a great big extravagant radio or, or room. It's just a radio, an antenna or two outside, my computers, my microphone to make videos, and I have fun every day. So enough of the rant at six minutes. Let's talk about a couple of options on what you might want to consider if you're looking at an HF radio or your very first HF radio. So to narrow this down on which direction you want to go, we need to ask a couple of questions. Now, you, are you going to be operating base or mobile? The next question is, are you going to be buying new or used? And the last question is, how much is your budget? So let's start like this. Um, let's say we're going to just show first a couple of places that you would buy new radios. Okay. And there, guys, there's a lot of options when it comes to buying radios. I can't give you an answer in one sentence on which radio to buy. Okay. Um, my personal experience, I was playing with the ASUS for a long time. And once I got a hold of ICOM, forget it. I'm an ICOM junkie now. I, I want everything ICOM. That just comes from years of experience or years of playing with radios. I've played with a lot of radios. 
and I know what feels good to me, and I know what I like, and I see what the manufacturer is progressing on. So that's how I make my decision, okay? So I'm going to show first one site that I've always went to and shopped for and made videos for and met the people and found deals that are uh, competitive to everybody else. Okay, I'll show you one site here first, if you're new, and that is gigaparts.com. Now, when I started making videos, uh, I found that the cheapest things to buy were from gigaparts. And then I met them a couple times and they said, hey, you're the guy that makes videos, you know, and then I, you know, got a relationship with them. They're very, very good people. They very, they, they really do good. Now, the thing with buying from a dealer is that, you know, and there's several dealers I'll show you. The thing about buying with a dealer is that you have a warranty, you have customer support, you have people to talk to to answer your questions when you're thinking about buying a radio. Now, let's say, for example, my 7300 here, okay? Um, what I found is, like I said, Gigaparts usually has great uh, manufacturer rebates included. Um, their prices are competitive, and they have online chats that will pop up, and you can ask questions, something you can't do in a used market, okay? Um, now, there's uh, a lot of information they have on here and a lot of things you can read about. And then to further your knowledge on something like this, you would go to the manufacturer themselves. And the manufacturer will tell you a lot more about, uh, let's see, where am I, amateur? A lot more about the actual device, okay? But typically, you can't buy from the manufacturer when it comes to ICOM or Yates do. You buy through a dealer. So if I look here at my 7300, because that's what I own, I have uh, a lot of information here about the actual radio. So between the two, I can come up with, you know, the manual. I can read through the manual, the brochure, the images and stuff and see about the radio if I'm interested in buying a brand new radio. Now, we'll go back to Gigaparts here for a second. Um, you know, another site, uh, hamradiooutlet.com. Whoops, I spelled it wrong. Look at that. Okay. So that's Ham Radio Outlet. Now, they have several stores as well, Gigaparts, and they have, you know, deals of their own and radios and such. And um, again, I personally haven't dealt a lot with Ham Radio Outlet at all. Um, I'm the type of person that drives a Ford until the day I die because I'm a Ford junkie, like I was a Yaesu junkie until I decided to switch to Icom. But yet, I have a Cadillac right now, and I never thought I'd drive a GM ever in my life. But when that's gone, I'll probably never have another one. So, um, you know, uh, but I have a Ford too. So I stick with Gigaparts because I've been with them for so long buying stuff from them I, I can pick up the phone call them and I know the guys so I feel comfortable talking with them some people are ham radio outlet junkies so um, these hopefully these vendors see this and they're going to be like wow this guy's giving us a bunch of exposure well I have no control of where you're buying your radio we're talking right now about new radios okay uh, another popular site dxengineering.com now I've ordered a couple things in my day from them um and they also, you know, all three of these sites I just showed you have, uh, you know, uh, support. You can call them. And they have stores. And, uh, you know, you can you, you know, you can go to a ham radio outlet and you could see the stuff on display. That's another thing. If you live close to a Gigaparts in Alabama or Las Vegas or HRO, you can go see this stuff physically if you're, you know, thinking about a new rate. Um, so there's, a, you know, these three to, to my head are what I think as the three major um, dealers for ham radios. Um, my biased uh, or unbiased, I guess biased opinion would be that I usually use Gigaparts a lot and that's what I recommend myself. Now, that's, you know, just my opinion because I've bought a lot of stuff from Gigaparts. So, um, if you want to talk to other people that bought from HRO, then you're more than welcome. Maybe you're an HRO fan. Maybe you get to know the guys there, whatever. This is what happens in amateur radio. You make relationships with dealers and and people at the dealers and then you see them at ham fest you shake their hand hey what's up you know i remember you this is what happens when you're talking about buying a new rig it's like buying a car although a lot of times you're not going to the car dealership three times a week <laughs> like the like the radio junkies do when you want to buy new things so that's the difference now let's go back here for a second in any website you can uh, or dealer site here you could search for different radios now it's up to you to determine what kind of radio you're looking for. 
Um, and that's where my next question comes in. Uh, you know, do you do you want to do base or mobile? Now, the difference is because you don't want something like my 7300 here, mobile. I mean, you can do it. People brought it to field day. I'm not sure. Do they have a mobile bracket for this? I guess they do. Look at this. Unbelievable. A mobile mounting bracket. So you can actually have this radio mobile. Would I recommend that radio as a mobile? Probably not. Because there's so many things you're dealing with on the screen when you're mobile. It's going to be kind of hard to focus on. I mean, you really should be focused on driving. Please don't text and drive. And, you know, it's something that has a lot of features in here that I think belongs on a desk. That's my personal opinion. Something mobile in an ICOM would more likely be, I think, an ICOM 7100. Now, something like this has a different kind of form factor. If you see here, it's got a detachable face. You can mount the radio under the seat and just have the face in display, uh, in range with the knob and stuff. But then again, people use these types of radios on their desk. They use these as a base station rig, as a portable rig in the field. So you have versatility with a radio. But for myself, I would rather have something like this in my car than the 7300. Now, if we flip to the other side, because you, your big three are ICOM, Yesu, and Kenwood. We're not going to talk about Kenwood today. But, <laughs> again, a personal opinion, and I'm not going to bring it to you. So, let's talk about a Yesu. If you wanted a Yesu desk radio, what comes to my mind? Well, a Yesu DX1200, okay? Something like this would be something more suited for a desk. It's a base radio. Now, Besides the fact of field day, if you're doing a weekend event, a de-expedition, sure, you can set this up in a tent under on a table and run it on, on battery power, sure. But would you want this mobile? I don't think so. Um, now, I'd be really surprised if they made, no, they don't make a mobile mount for this. So that's really not designed to be a mobile radio, okay? Um, could you put this on your front seat and use this while you're parked for three hours? I guess you could. But if you wanted a mobile radio from a Yesu, Something that comes to my mind would be an FT-891. Now, something like this will pretty much do a lot that the one I just showed you will do, but it's in a mobile form. Now, again, detachable face. You can put the radio base under the seat and have the detachable face on your dashboard. You know, you get the uh, detachable uh, face kit uh, right here, and uh, that, you know, keeps just the... Uh, the, the face on your death on your 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 dash but at the same time again people use something like this on their desk as a base station in fact they recommend power supplies and they recommend base mics you see this mic right here the MD200 AAX now that's a desk microphone that is a lot better than the stock hand mic however here's a fun fact I have this right, mic with my 450 right here and all the reviews I read online, that the 100 is way better than the 200. And look, it's less than half the price. That's just a fun fact. So, again, you have versatility. You can use these radios uh, on your desk or in the vehicle. But not every base radio belongs in a vehicle, if that makes sense. Now, if I were to think of a Kenwood, just to show it, um, if I were to have one Kenwood on my desk, it would be the 2S, uh, TS2000, which I'm not sure if they even sell this anymore. Oh, I guess they do. There's an open box. Here's probably a new one here. So the TS2000, uh, I'll just look at the open box, for example. Gigaparts does have a lot of open box and clearance, which is, means somebody either bought it and they returned it right away. They didn't like it. It's fully inspected. You know, open box is different than used. Open box means it came back to the, the uh, dealer. They looked through it. They checked it out. It's clean. It's got all the original accessories. Um, well, except this one, missing the line filter and retention band. But normally, it's really good, and you save money on it, okay? So that's the next best thing to new. So this radio here is a base radio. Now, I don't know if they make a mobile bracket for that. I wouldn't want this radio mobile. But this radio does a lot and more than the last two that I just showed you. So again, there's a lot of research you have to do on what you want. So we'll get to that here shortly. I can tell right now this video is going to be long. So um, a mobile Kenwood of something like this, because you wouldn't want this on your in your vehicle would be if I think uh, TS um, 480 SAT SAT I think this radio right here 
would be a uh, mobile radio. And again, with a detachable face, face under the you know under the seat, and you can use this on your desk. So I've just showed you six different radios from three different manufacturers with all different possibilities, mobile and base. Okay, and you know the accessories that you can get with it. So um, back to my uh, next question. So uh, do you want to buy new or used? So let's say you're not in the new market. Okay, let's say you've been to these sites and you're not sure if this hobby is going to be for you. Maybe you're not sure you want to spend a thousand dollars or, you know, these, again, these are a little more expensive for uh, new radios. But when it comes to me, if I'm thinking about it, 849 is really not that bad 13 years into the hobby. But for the newcomer to the hobby, that may be a lot to stretch. And I get that. Trust me. Okay. So where would you go for a used radio if you were on the used market and this can be a little this could be a little scary so you have to pay attention it can be scary because you know it's like buying anything used when you go to a flea market or you go to a yard sale a lot of times i've gotten some really good deals used and sometimes or just a couple times i've got stung on a couple used things so let me show you a couple sites that you would possibly go to if you're looking for used gear okay so we're gonna go first to the probably the most popular and uh, I'll show you this site and then I'll show you a little gem that I use sometimes but first we're gonna go to qrz.com now qrz is a site if you're not familiar where there's uh, a lot of resources here in forums uh, swap me videos in the front uh, things for sale but um, uh, so anyways, you know, careful on the forums because, uh, you know, asking a very simple question may, you know, get you yelled at or, you know, you may take it the wrong way. There's a lot of a lot of seasoned operators on this site. So if you are, as the guy said in the comment in the last video, still in diapers, you may want to resource more to the comment section of my videos on certain things and ask others than you would go into a forum where there's 10,000 people responding. But we're going to go to swap meet. Now, the swap meet. Has several categories here. Ham radio gear for sale. I always check this every day or two just to see if there's something I like. Now, QRZ does a really good job, you know, checking out things that people are posting because they don't want nobody to get scammed on their behalf. Now, you know, there's a couple rules on this site that you need to post pictures for sale. You need to have your call sign and something that looks human interactive that you're posting it for sale. If somebody puts something on like a generic picture of a 7300 with no information, they're going to flag it and take it down because you don't know who that is and how they're getting the money and wherever. So they do a pretty good job. And this, this list changes daily. But on here, you can see a plethora of all kinds of things used. This Magnum right here, I would like that. That's a 10, 12 meter. Uh, oh, he's looking for one. Okay. Uh, so, see, I'm already looking to buy stuff and spend money. So uh, it'll show you wanted or for sale. So there's things on here. Let's let's see a radio real quick. Um, here's a uh, Kenwood TS570DG. Now, um, here's a used radio. He describes it. Uh, more pictures on request. He's showing his price and, you know, um, how to get a hold of him and what, or you can post here. So you have to register with the site. Uh, you have to be an amateur radio operator to register. And you can check out the pictures and see what they're offering for sale. You can see here he wrote his call sign. And generally, you're using PayPal to pay. That way you're protected as a buyer. Okay, Some people uh, use um, sellers will take money orders, but they have to wait until their money order is cashed, uh, You know, make sure they got their funds, and yada, yada. So you can see here that he's selling the radio. Looks like the uh, uh, cat cable. And the microphone and the manual doesn't look like there's a box with it. He shows it's working. So chances are that radio is, you know, legit. And you can look up his call sign and, and um, you know, 525 plus shipping and insurance. So now I'm not exactly sure. Uh, I don't really participate in Kenwood, so I'm not really not sure what the going price is of that radio. But researching a little bit on your end, you can see what those radios are selling for. Uh, maybe look on eBay and the sold auctions. Let's do it together. Let's do that. We're going to go to eBay, and we're going to see the last time somebody sold one of those. This is, to to give you a piece of advice, this is what pawn shops and everybody uses to determine what the going price of an object is, is on eBay. So I have a TS570DG. 
I'm going to go to advanced and I'm going to type in Kenwood TS 570 DG and I'm going to click sold listings and that's going to see anybody that sold one. Now look, okay, they've sold for 475 plus 50 shipping, so that puts it at what 525. Um, uh, 459 plus six shipping you know given that reading these they all work i'm not sure but you can see about the going price of this um and what they're going for now you have to watch out when you're looking for used gear if it says tech special okay you can see here they put excellent condition but there may be one i'm guessing at 275 let's see if there's something wrong with this i'm curious it does work, but due to an unfortunate accident, it is dinged up. Okay, so it works, but he's selling it for parts because it's not in the best shape. So you can see you got to watch that. That 275, if it sounds too good to be true, it is, unless you find someone that just doesn't need the money. Okay, but eBay is a good way to see where or how much the things are going for. Okay, so that's an example. That was one radio upon thousands. I'm ranting here. I'm going on. I like doing this. So I apologize. This video is going to be very long. So that's the use. Here's another site that I use that a lot of people don't know about. QTH.com. When you go there, it's gonna be, you're going to look at it like, oh, this is a domain sale or domain hosting website. But look, ham radio info, classified ads. If you look at the site, you're not going to see really anything ham related unless you really start reading. But I go right here. Classified ads. And you have different categories. Radios, HF. There's 1,100 of them in here. Um, so, uh, you know, a lot of wanted, a lot of for sale. Here's an 857, no picture, of course. QTH is a little less stringent on getting the pictures and verifying. You know, I guess you do have to fill in some information, like your call sign and stuff. But, um, you know, QTH sometimes has some good deals, too. Uh, here's an older rig. This is a 440 SAT. It's a little bit older. Um, and I'm not really a Kenwood guy, so I don't know much about those. That's KI4LUI. He's a Kenwood guy. Anyways, oh, look, a Mint IC7300 with matching speaker. That's what I have. He wants 1045 shipped, okay, with the speaker. Now, if I look at that, and I say, wow, that's used. But then if I look here on Gigaparts, well, I can get a brand new one for 979 after the rebate. So I don't get a speaker. Big deal. The speaker in this thing is phenomenal. So that, you know, you have to spend the one the 1079 and you get the rebate and you end up saving money. So actually, that's not a good deal. He wants every bit because he bought it for 1200 in a day. So he's losing 200 But now you can get it for less than that with the rebate. So that's not really a good deal. So there's a lot of, you know, looking into what you need this and this is what i look at this is exactly how i do it so if you want to learn how i buy a radio used this is how i do it here's a that's wanted to buy so a lot of radios to look through also chances are if you're looking at a listing that's four months old they may not have it a lot of guys don't take the listing off when it's sold so you're looking at a listing it's four months old i still get emails from six months old from listings i've had hey do you still have that no that's gone i forgot i even sold that it's been six months i've already you know, switch jobs in that time. I don't even know where that went. But here's a for sale Yesu FT950, a nice rig, nice Yesu. I played with one of those. Um, he wants uh, 700 plus shipping, and he takes PayPal plus a fee because PayPal charges him or money order. Price is firm. So that is not being sold new anymore. So somebody looking to buy one of these knows that radio or might like that radio and they want to buy one used because that's not a new radio that's being sold anymore that's you know uh, i don't know 10 15 years old so um that's a great rig though i would assume that i would use that as a supplement to a couple other things i have um you know but if uh, here's another thing you can do you can search okay and we're going to search for one that's a great radio that would be a good starter Okay, here's an ICOM 706. I have one. Um, this guy's got a bunch of them. Now, look, here's, okay, check this out. So, this guy's got uh, a 706 Mark II G with VHF UHF on it for 650, 857 for 700. He's got an FT100 for 460. I love that FT100. That thing is right uh, here, and he's got several of them. I have one of these. But uh, that FT100 will do HF, 6 meters, VHF UHF. Great radio. Um, used, you can't buy them anymore new, 
And uh, 460, that's not bad. You'll do everything with that. You can put it mobile. You can detach the face. You can use it on your base. Again, I can't answer it with one question. I'm just showing you a couple examples as if I was talking to a friend trying to show him about different radios. There are so many different models that I can't go through them all, okay? But um, there's deals. you got to look for deals, okay? Here's a 706 for 500. Um, here's uh, a 706 here, 350, local pickup only. If you live by this guy with the original, what is this? It comes with the CW filter, mic power cord, owner's manual, and original box. 350 firm, okay? That's a great radio. I have that exact same one. That does uh, 100 watts on HF and 6 meters, 10 watts on VHF 2 meters. No UHF, maybe you don't need that. You can do a detachable face. You can do digital modes with that. You can do CW. You can do PSK, RIDI. You can do FT8. You can do uh, Hellstriber. You can do JT8, uh, JT9, JT65, all that stuff. Just because it's an older rig doesn't mean you can't do all the stuff. Now, it may not have all this USB connectivity and uh, Spectrum waterfall, but again, work yourself up to that. I didn't have a waterfall for 10 years. Finally, I have one. Here's a great rig. So that's uh, just an example that you can find things like this. And he's got his phone number there. So you have a, a, you know, a little bit of a peace of mind to call the guy, ask him some questions. Maybe not ask him questions about, you know, if you don't know what an HF rig is, don't expect him to tell you. He wants to sell it to someone that knows what they want. So maybe ask him, you know, has it ever been uh, worked on? Have you ever burnt the finals out? Um, have you ever uh, had any problems with it? You know, maybe maybe he has a little glitch or something that he knows about it that may not be a big deal. Once in a while, the little segment on this thing goes out, and that hasn't happened in six months. Okay, I could live with that for my first rig. No big deal. Maybe he says the speaker doesn't work. You have to use an external speaker, but he would have put that here in the description. So that's your used market, okay? And uh, what you probably don't want to do is go to Amazon. Because Amazon, huh, I've never bought an HF rig on Amazon, but let's try it. Uh, FT891. Let's see if I can buy one. I could for 654. Now I wonder who's selling this. Um, who is selling this? Uh, sold by Ham City and fulfilled by Amazon. So you have Amazon's backing on that. Sure, you have warranty and all that stuff, but. I wouldn't buy a ham radio from Walmart even if they sold it new with a warranty because they're just selling a radio. I want to buy a radio from a radio dealer. That's just me, okay? Um, so take it with whatever you want. These are just opinions and helpful hints. Are we having fun yet? <laughs> oh, my gosh. I keep going. <laughs> you, might, <laughs> you might as well cancel TV because you're just going to be watching me from now on for 40 minutes at a time. Well, there's a lot of info, so I'm trying to cover it all. And I'm having fun, so... You guys are the best. Okay, so here's another thing. Hamfest. Now, Hamfest is great. You got to go to a Hamfest, but I'm going to warn you of something. Let's let's Google something here. Let's just Google Hamfest. You know why? Because I suck at a social media phone loaded with pictures kind of guy. There's no pictures on my phone. I don't constantly do selfies. So I I don't have these pictures. So I rely on Google, okay? You got other people out there that make videos on YouTube and they always got a picture for something. I envy that because, you know, in this day and age, you got to have pictures of everything. So I'll look at other people's pictures and hopefully they don't mind. But I just want to show you something. Go into a ham fest. You know, if you've never been, uh, actually, you can check out a video on my channel about ham fest. I went to uh, Orlando Hamcation. I'm going to Dayton this year. I'm going to Orlando Hamcation again this year. But you could find a lot of stuff at ham fest. So let's look at this for a second. Is there a lot of people at ham fest? Absolutely. Look at all these people here. All kinds of stuff. There's a ham fest near you. I guarantee it. Look at all this stuff. New vendors there or, you know, vendors selling new stuff. But then you got the people selling stuff used. That right, you know what that is? That's a Lafayette HE20D, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. They both look like Lafayette. I think that's a Lafayette CB. That was one of my dad's CBs before I was even thought of, I think, right there. But anyways... I'm just looking here. Um, okay, so let's look at this for example. Here you go. You'll find this a lot at Hamfest. You'll see people selling radios. Normally, the people that are selling the boat anchors, and I'll tell you about that in a second, will be at the front when you walk in, right? And you'll see this, and you'll see all these radios. Like, wow. But you'll see a lot of them, the same kind, 
on the tables next to each other. So this guy may be selling one, and then, you know, a Heath kid over here, and here's a, uh, that's a Drake L4B amplifier. Uh, I don't know what these are. That looks like a uh, old icon there. But anyways, um, so you'll see these people selling these radios, and you're like, wow, which one do I buy? Well, there comes a little bit of a risk. Sometimes. Now, guys that are seasoned, please don't yell at me. I get it. I've bought a lot of stuff at HamFest. You guys are not crooks. But there is a hidden egg here or there that won't work. The price is not really cheap. It's kind of right there where everybody else is. And you're thinking, well, this is you know sort of cheap. It's not $100. But this guy's selling it. And then you get it home and find out it doesn't modulate on AM. Or the filter is missing on sideband. Or the thing has got total noise on 10, on 10 meters. You, know, you just don't know. These guys want to sell. They may not know there's a problem with it. They may not know that uh, you know that there's going to be a problem. They may blame it on a car ride home when you dra- travel 500 miles back to your house. I don't know. You just got to be careful when you think you're going to go buy your very first HF rig at the HamFest. Again, HamFest is not full of crooks. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying there's a lot of radios there, and they're selling them because they don't need them or they need the money or they're just a lot of them. And you don't know what the condition of the radios are. Um, you know, and sometimes uh, this year at Melbourne Hamfest, guess what I saw? I saw an ICOM 706 Mark II G for 275 And it had all the accessories. And I, I saw that and I said, oh my gosh. Okay. So I, I went over. I said, hey, and my buddy, I said, hey, let me borrow up cash real quick. He had cash. He knew I was good for it. I'm like, let me get that cash real quick. As soon as I buy it, I'll go to the ATM down the street. I'll give it right back to you. Yeah, no problem, Eric. Gives me the cash. I go back. Ten seconds later, it was gone. The guy was walking away from it. Now, two things could have happened. Either they knew it was broke or the guy didn't know it was broke. Or they just put a good price on it to get rid of it. And somebody saw that and they stole it. So that happens. Uh, There's some good deals. There may not be some good deals. Um, Things like at HamFest, things like CW keys and bugs and paddles. Well, these you can't really go wrong. You can look at it. The spring tension's there. It's making contact. It's not rusted out. Great. You got a really cool AT&T key from the 70s and or the 1870s, and it works fine. Um, you know, or maybe you want to buy an antenna. You can look at the antenna and physically see, well, yeah, it'll work. It's a two-meter J-pole. How can it go wrong? If it is broke, I'll solder it, whatever. But a radio at a ham fest, sometimes, you know, you never know. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying is the there is the risk and that goes back to buying from somebody because again sometimes you're buying from these guys you're paying them cash and you never see them again unless you're digging into his life and getting his call sign you don't know who he is if he'll ever be there again he may have cancer and be dying tomorrow you don't know and you know i've bought a couple things where i took it home it didn't work and i didn't go searching the guy down i tried repairing it i put it on qrz for used as parts i got most of my money back and somebody else fixed it and they kept it or turned around and sold it that's just the way it goes i'm not here to lie to you i'm here to just tell you what happens it's going to happen to somebody so but again now here we go Hamfest supplements the hobby to me i don't go to a ham fest looking to buy my hf rig i don't go to a ham fest looking to uh, uh you know i go to ham fest to look for something like wow this is pretty neat this is a homebrew somebody made this little amplifier uh you know it's it's priced right pretty cheap maybe i can learn something from it if i take it apart uh you know maybe it doesn't work maybe it does but that's cool maybe i'll make a video on it so i pick it up and i, I bring it home that's what i do with ham fest when i want something fun or i get bored or i need something just to, to burn a hundred dollars in my pocket I go to Hamfest and I find something cool like that. Like here, you know, a little ant vintage laptops. Who doesn't want a vintage laptop? I sure do. I mean, here's a here's a weather radio here, a vintage weather radio. Uh, the, a couple of weather radios, alarm clocks. Over here, it looks like there's an old vintage uh, handheld radio, maybe a two meter. Um, you know, a couple older laptops. Looks like a computer over here. So, you know, pretty cool stuff like that. Little knickknacks, things that I want to buy, things that I may not want to buy, but I see it and I just can't live without it. That's what's good about HamFest. But I think for going to a HamFest to buy your very first rig probably may not be your best option. Let's see what's on this table here. Now I'm looking at, I might sit here and look at pictures. So it looks like we got a uh, S, uh, looks like either a Simpson meter or a SWR analyzer. We got some panel mount meters that may be for old boat anchors. 
What are boat anchors? Let's talk about that. Our last stop at this journey of this epically long video here about buying a radio. You thought it was going to be an easy answer, right? I'm just going to point to a radio and tell you how to buy it or which one to buy. <laughs> so boat anchors. Now this is, okay, let me give you a story about this. They call these boat anchors because they're typically very big, bulky, heavy, all metal, you know, uh, radios. They're, they're very big old time radios. Now I envy all of you viewers and all the people I've known that started back in the day, 40, 50 years ago that worked and used radios like this. And when things broke, you fixed them. You didn't send it back to the manufacturer. You took it apart and fixed it. Or something like this Heath kit here, you built that from scratch. That was a big deal back in the day. I wish I could have been in those days and learned about all that. Then again, I wouldn't be as young and vibrant as I am today. I'd probably be about 70 years old. But the Heath kits used to come in kits, you know, and there's still people out there today using what's called boat anchors. Now, if you if you look in, at these types of radios here, this is just a Google search, just to give you an idea, because I don't have a museum of boat anchors. Um, these are typically radios that are from back in the day. They didn't have fancy bells and whistles. Everything was operated from the front of the radio. No menus, no USB connectivity, tubes inside. So they had transformers and tubes, and they were very durable, to say the least. And, you know, they, they could take a lot of abuse, um, but they were a little bit, you had to, you had to really uh, have a little bit of a knowledge about them. You had to warm them up. You had to know when they drift or what, you know, they drift on frequency as they warm up or maybe when they're warm, they still drift. Again, I'm not the expert at boat anchors, but they have a totally different kind of sound. You know, they may be off frequency a tad. Uh, they're, they're, you know, not spot on software defined radios and uh, stuff that we have today. They're traditional transmitters and receivers that run on tubes. But the thing is when these things, let me show you what I had one time that I bought at a yard sale. I bought a Yesu FT 101. I think it was the Zulu Delta. I think it had, yes, it had the uh, little uh, six digit uh, display here for frequency. So I had one of these and I bought it for yard at a yard sale for a hundred dollars. It turned on, and at the yard sale, I said, can I plug it in real quick? Yeah, sure. So I plugged it in. I didn't have an antenna, but I saw it light up. I had white noise or static out of the speakers, so I figured, okay, I got a good chance here. The thing's turning on. It's glowing. The tubes are glowing. Great. But when I brought it home, I powered it up, hooked an antenna up to it, hooked it up to a dummy load with a power meter, and transmit. And I hear the relay clicking, and nothing happened. I didn't get no power output. And I didn't have any receive. I heard nothing. I thought, okay, well, I started diving into it. Now I'm not the expert at these kind of old tube rigs, but I figured I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna figure it out. I started Googling and I started, you know, talking to people. And turns out, well, I replaced the tubes. You know, I put tubes in there and I put a rectifier tube. Nothing. They were glowing, everything. It turns out it was most likely uh, something in the transmit receive circuit flips from transmit to receive with a relay. And so I couldn't figure it out. I didn't get that much into it. So I sold it for a hundred dollars, exactly what I bought it for. And it came with a mic and all that. And I, I asked the guy, I said, listen, just do me a favor. When you fix it, uh, you know, just tell me what it, what it is. Just so I know, I don't care if you find a five cent resistor. It was bad. Just tell me what it was. Yeah, no problem. And he emailed me and told me it was something simple, and, and I, I can't remember. And he said, oh, it's great. It's working. So now he's got a radio that works. But you see, if you're a newcomer to the hobby, you may find one of these for $100, and you may think, you know, that's a, a really good thing to get into, or, you know, that's your cheap first HF rig. I mean, think about it. Who wouldn't want one of these? This is what all the Elmers and all the people that were doing radio before I was even a twinkle in my dad's eye, they were using stuff like this. Why wouldn't I want to use it? This is what ham radio was built on, right? But not really, because in this day and age, you got to know how to troubleshoot this and fix it. Yesu's not going to take this and fix it. And, you know, it's going to cost you parts and money. And if you're into that kind of stuff, cool. Uh, you know, there's a guy, Mr. Carlson's Lab on YouTube. The guy's a genius. I wish I was an eighth of a man that guy is. He knows how to use every piece of machinery known to man, every kind of diagnostic gear, and can fix anything by looking at it. The guy can draw schematics when he opens the cover. Me, I can't do that, so this is not for me. But, again, we're going to go back to one more thing that I said. Let's say you're a, you know, 10-year operator, and, you know, you are an electronics enthusiast, and you're having fun, and you want something different. 
Then you pick up one of these to restore. And then you get on stuff like the Monday Night Boat Anchor Net. Another thing to supplement your hobby, to get you interested in something else, picking up a used boat anchor to work on and restore and put on your shelf and fire up on those, you know, events, the, the boat anchor net or the, you know, uh, the 80 meter whatever net. Uh, how, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that fire up these rigs on occasion and they work it and you can just hear people are off frequency and people are squealing and, and shifting and it just adds to the nostalgia of the hobby that we may, me myself as a newcomer to the hobby of 13 years and you as a newcomer of yesteryear or yesterday, uh, you can hear the nostalgia of these guys that have been doing this for 50 and 40 and 30 years. It's just cool. So that's, that's what I, you know, and I have an itch to buy a boat anchor. I have a 7,300. I have a QRP rig. I have all this other stuff. I want a boat anchor now. I want to learn about these older radios. Maybe not this exact one. I'm just staring at the pictures here. But I want an old one to probably an old ICOM that I can mess with and change tubes and clean up and replace capacitors that are leaking and resistors that burned out and, and get this thing working and have a success story behind it. That's what I feel for me in my day and age of radio of boat anchors. But there's some people that never left these kind of radios. That's all they've ever used. They never got into the waterfalls and the pan adapters and the SDRs. They use this, and that's what they've always used, and that's what they'll die using. And I just think that's cool. One last topic to touch on that I get asked quite frequently from the new operators that say, should my first HF radio be a QRP radio? And for those that don't know, QRP stands for technically a QRP radio or, or uh, you know, the average QRP radio is 5 watts max power. Uh, QRP radio for your first radio. I'm going to say no, and let me show you why. I'm going to go to a site that I've showed in the past, and if you're not familiar, you can look at my video about it and uh, see about this. Now, this is dxmaps.com. What this is, is a site that gives us an opportunity to look at what people are reporting as their contacts and their conditions. Okay, so it's safe to assume that all these people, we'll go to the list here, all these people that are reporting the contacts, you know, uh, EC1CT talked to ZF2MJ, 7,000 kilometers. Now, it's safe to assume that all these people that are operating these contacts are using minimum 100 watts, okay? I don't think any of these contacts here are 5 watts. There may be a couple. It is totally possible. I've done it. I've worked DX on 5 watts. It will happen. Just look at this map, though. I don't think all these people on 80 meters tonight are on 5 watts. So there's some of your competition right there. And on top of that, you have power line noise and atmospheric conditions, although in the winter it is getting quieter now. But you're not you're going to discourage yourself. A QRP radio or 5 watt or less radio may be enticing because it's a small all in the one box, you know, maybe cheaper. Uh, there's a lot of manufacturers making portable go kit radios that are really nicely priced, but I, I consider, I love QRP. I consider QRP a supplement to my hobby. When I want something different, I take my QRP rig and my go kit. I go out to a park. I go out to a beach. I go out to the island on my jet ski and I set up on an island and I work five Watts. And when you make contacts on five Watts on an island in the middle of a river, it's, it's a rush. It really is because you're working guys on 5 watts with a battery-powered radio, and it gives you a whole new rush. But when you're at home, you don't want to have a 5-watt radio on your desk because it, you're going to call and call, and eventually you'll make a contact on 5 watts. It's not going to last long. It can last long. But I don't want you to get discouraged and think, man, this sucks. I hear all these people talking and all these people making contacts. This guy's been talking for a half hour. He won't shut up. Well, that's because they're probably on 80 meters, they're probably all using 1,000 watts, 1,500 watts, 800 watts, you know, uh, 200 or even 100. Um, so that's my theory. A QRP is great, but it's not for the first timer. In my video of uh, my original video of my Go Kit before I made my new Go Kit, I showed what was in my little box that I had, a whole bunch of bells and whistles that I had fun with. And then I went out on the beach and I was standing in the surf. And I always said, me and Patrick always said, 
I want to go in the surf with an FT817 around my neck on battery with a telescopic whip and work a station on the beach in the surf. I did it. It's on video. You can watch it. And after that, I pretty much satisfied my urge of that radio, sold it, and moved on. But we always talked about that, and I did it. It was fun. It was a rush. But in that video, you only saw the contact. You didn't see me out there for 45 minutes calling CQ. Yeah, that's, that, that happened. It was constant and constant and constant. Finally, somebody came through. You don't want to discourage yourself. Here's 40 meters tonight. And I have videos on all these bands, so you can learn about the bands from uh, 1.2 gigahertz down to six, uh, 160 meters and see just about all this. But again, here's some 40 meter DX to Europe and some 40 meter across the continent. But these people are using Yaggies and they're using power. Some may not be using power, but they're not using 5 watts. So your competition is these people plus the noise uh, that we have now. Um, you know, uh, con you know, the noise is, is quieter in the winter time now, but power line noise, my area, it's like S five right now. So five Watts, not going to do it. So that will keep you from getting discouraged. Uh, and look, we showed you, you can go on that uh, website, pick up a used ICOM 706 for 350 bucks, which is cheaper than a QRP radio. Holy cow. I am exhausted. <laughs> It, that's a lot of talking. I, you know, for those who say, man, this video is way too long. I apologize, but I, I got into a little bit of a, you know, Elmering type tangent. And I just, I, I wanted to share my knowledge. So, and my opinions and help you at least make a decision that may be your best or your worst. Maybe I geared you the wrong way. Maybe you agree with me. Maybe you totally disagree. Here's what I'll ask. I'm not going to ask you to smash the like button anymore. In fact, the com commenter said, don't ever say smash the like button again. I get it. I don't even care if you hit the like button. I like when you hit the like button or the dislike because it tells me that you liked my video and my effort. But I won't no longer say it. What I would like is for more comments. I want to hear your comments on when you first got into the hobby and you bought your first HF rig. Or if you're a newcomer, I can't answer a bunch of questions because, I'm, I mean, I, I try. But I'm pretty sure there's going to be a lot of comments on this video. Just throw out there, I'm looking at buying this as my first HF rig. I'm going to do this. Or I'm waiting for this sale. Or I'm going to buy it from a friend. Or I think this is going to be the good radio. Or maybe someone else commenting has the same idea. Or maybe they have a suggestion for you. Leave a comment below. If you feel inclined, hit the like button and just to let me know that you liked what I did, regardless of how long this video was. But leave a comment and tell me what you think. As I told you what I did in my radio days, tell me what you did when you bought your first radio. It's like buying a first car. You remember you've seen those on Facebook? People, you know, share your first car experience and what they had. I'd be curious just to scroll through and read your first radio or your first experience or your good or your bad experience. So let me know in the comments. I hope you got a lot of information from this video. I couldn't have packed any more in there. Actually, I probably could have, but it would have been way too long. Thanks for watching, guys. You guys are amazing. 7-3 from KJ4YZI.